Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this video. I hope you guys are great today. This is Chris from Verillo Trading. I thought it would be a good time to make this video as I'm done for the day, just watching the close of the market here. We're 15 minutes till close, so I said, why not record the screen and do a little video here. I wanted to run you guys through my layout on all of my screens in front of me here. As the market's moving up here, I'm not trading it. I had a good session myself and I'll just let it play out here as we move up here on the NASDAQ and the S&P here close to all time highs. The Russell a little bit weaker. So basically a couple of viewers asked me, hey, can you share your screen layout, what you look at on all your screens and whatnot? Sure, I'll do that in this video right here. On this screen, you're looking at my main platform, which is Jigsaw, but actually you're seeing some Sierra charts windows hidden in the background and on the side here as well. What I've got on all my screens here, so we've got, this is the one in front of me right here. The left, I've got this and on top, we've got another screen, that's why I'm recording it, but actually there's another chart up there, just a guide chart, and that's pretty much it. So let's get started. Guys, if you enjoy this type of content, leave a like on the video because it really helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. According to YouTube analytics, only like 20% of the viewers are subscribed to the channel, so go ahead and do that. All right, so what we're looking at on this main screen is three markets, three futures contracts, which represent the three major stock indices that trade. On the left, we have the NASDAQ, in the middle, we've got the S&P 500, and on the right, we have the Russell 2000. I do not look at the Dow Jones futures because the volume and the liquidity is not great, let's be honest. Over here on the left, this is the Euro futures contract against the dollar, and I put that there simply because there is a correlation sometimes between the Euro and the stock market, so we watch that. Right now, it's 10 minutes to market close, so we're now watching the shenanigans at 350 that always happen those crazy algorithms that get turned on i guess we could start here so you can see i have my depth of market for nasdaq basically the bid and the ask and the tape and on the right of all my doms i have my volatility extensions just to get an average of how much the volatility is on the day these are one standard deviation movements i have that for the s p and the russell as well and i won't explain to you how i use that but that's what i have there so on the top left of my screen now, we've got the time and we've got this, which is I think quite important for a scalper or a short term trader, which is the volume and delta every 15 seconds of trading. So for example, this is updating in real time here. Right now we're watching. So 410 contracts just traded in that 15 second interval. And this continues to update. On top of that is the delta, which is the difference between contracts hit the bid and contracts hit the ask. So this is the information that I find most relevant to me. In reality, I kind of stole some of these ideas from traders I follow, but I find this information is really all I need. Now, of course, I do use some charts on the other screen here as a guide. So I basically think of them as guide charts. So let's go over to the next screen here. We've got two charts here. On the right, we have a footprint chart. On the left, we have just a regular range bar chart. And I change the time frames of these around a lot. That's one of my favorite things about the platform Sierra charts is how easy it is to change to any time frame, including time frames of ranges on numbers bars like this. So you can see I just changed it to 10 minute bars here, but before I actually had it to 60 tick ranges. So let's put the 60 tick range back and see what it looks like. So if you don't know what range bars are, they basically finish forming once the market has moved the specified amount that you selected. In this case, it's 15 points or 60 ticks. And again, the cool thing about Sierra chart is that you can put any custom amount of ranges, any amount of minutes as your time frame selected. So that's really up to the person themselves to determine which one they like. I often switch them around to find the ones with the most clarity on the day. Over here, we've got this typical range chart, really nothing special going on here. Really, my eyes are here like 90% of the time. And that's why I made it a point to put all the relevant information on one screen to avoid my eyes drifting all around and instead just focus on the tape because that's the most relevant information for me. So the way I have this going on in Sierra charts, I actually have three chart books with the same thing. So if I wanna switch over to the S&P futures, I can do that. So now we're looking at footprint and range chart for the S&P futures. One last time, I'll switch the chart book and I have the same thing going on for the Russell 2000. And again, just to get an idea of how these major indices are moving relative to each other, because the correlations are quite an important tool for short-term traders these days. But I'm more of a NASDAQ trader, so most of the time I'm staying on this screen right here. I hid the account number off to the side, but there's some PL for the day if you want. Pretty decent day. A lot of scratches, which is good. I do have one more screen right here at the top, which is another screen that I use just to place a guide chart. So in this case, I normally have a 30 minute chart here 
for the main markets. And again, it switches with the chart book. So this one's NQ 30 minute, switch it over to the S&P futures, switch it over to the Russell futures. And that's pretty much it. The hot key to switch chart books in Sierra charts is F7 or F8. So I use that third monitor just to see bigger picture timeframes every now and then. Just call it general charting. I also use TradingView as well. I like TradingView because you can easily switch between your tickers and your watch list just by using the up and down arrow keys here. Um, I have a watch list that has pretty much all the major tickers I look at, including the dollar, crude oil, Bitcoin, gold, etc. So, I mean, guys, that's pretty much all I look at. I don't have more screens than that. Some traders have like 20 screens, really. I only have two screens. Like I said, I'm trying to put all of the relevant information all onto this one screen right in front of me because I do feel like if you have too much information going on on a bunch of screens, you're definitely losing focus there somewhere. So my goal for whatever I do is to stay focused on the information that is relevant to how I execute my trades and how my edge exists in the market. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the last thing that is an important piece of the puzzle when it comes to my trading setup is the price squawk integration into Jigsaw. So let's just take a listen to so, it. So, so, so. So I, for me personally, price squawk helps me a lot for seeing when certain inflection points are being held or for example, when we're seeing aggressive trading in one direction, the market is moving. It helps me hear the time and sales as well as see it. So it strengthens my connection to the information I'm seeing. So that's the last of it. All right, guys, I will catch you soon. Take care, subscribe. Let's go, bye.